What's your in-laws from hell story? After driving almost 11 hours with husband to see in-laws, mother-in-law accused me of keeping her son away from her and how I'm not ever going to let her see her son again to my face and started crying in front of multiple adults and children. The next day, when I asked to speak with her to let her know that what she did was a little unreasonable and very hurtful to me, she showed her true colours and went from crying victim to screaming viciously at me and trying to hit me. She screamed me and husband, her son, out of the house and threw the gifts we'd bought her out the door like pieces of trash. I cannot believe this is the woman who gave birth to my husband. She's like from another species. This isn't as out there as some of the overly rude in-laws, but mine were so utterly self-absorbed, insular and lacking in social skills that I was literally ignored throughout most of my early encounters with them. They had a family culture which they all buy into in which my father-in-law is the centre of everything. The only family pictures in the house were of him, none of the three kids. All food was prepared to his tastes and he had no concept of other people's needs or feelings. Initially, I felt utterly rejected and disapproved of, because who goes to dinner again and again with people and is never asked one question, not even, how are you? It took me a long time to realise that they just had no idea how to interact with other people, because they lived in this complete bubble. To this day, my father-in-law treats every conversation as an opportunity to change the topic to himself no matter how outside of his experience it is. But I realised that they never cared enough about me to bother to disapprove of me. That being said, my father-in-law's levels of narcissism are so great that he saw slights and digs at him in a lot of my Facebook posts and unfriended me because he couldn't bear the idea that I wasn't considering his feelings with every thought I shared, as he's so accustomed to everyone catering to his needs all the time. I'm sure I was supposed to be wounded to have no longer been in his good graces, but I just laughed. I think he's genuinely and cluelessly taken aback when he's not considered the most important and greatest person in the room. Okay, I honestly don't think there's anything worse than a person like this that thinks every single thing that happens in life revolves around them. Honestly, there's nothing worse. My mother-in-law refers to all of her daughter-in-laws as son's first wife. She gave me used stationery for Christmas. So much karma for my pooey meal. Want more? She wore a white dress to my brother-in-law's wedding rehearsal dinner and interrupted and then stopped the best man's toast so that the soup wouldn't get cold. She told me that I'm a terrible mother for not sending my kids outside to play unsupervised all summer, like she did in the 70s where mums would kick the kids out, lock the doors and tell kids to not come home until dinner. I nearly died having my first child. And she told me that was God telling me I'm not fit to be a mum of more kids. After we had our second, she told me that I had my hands full and had no business having a third. After my third child, she told me I had too many children for anyone to ever want to babysit. By the way, she has three children. I keep a very clean house, but I have three young boys. They're messy. Before brother-in-law and sister-in-law came to visit one time, she sent a cleaning crew ahead to clean my house so it would be up to their standards. He's the golden child. Father-in-law lives with us six months a year while he collects butterflies for his book. He pays no rent and runs up our utility bills with no thought about it. When we ask him to clean up after himself, he says he didn't realise he'd made such a mess but thought it was my job as an at-home mum to clean up after the men. He's not invited back for 2016. When she comes to our house to see the kids, I regularly tell her not to get involved in our laundry. She always ignores me, goes through our closets, rifles through our stuff, and then makes comments about what she finds. Husband always stands up to her. I was the one who constantly tried to repair their relationship. I finally gave that up last year. We are now essentially no contact with them, and they're not allowed in our house to talk to the kids on the phone without us supervising, and phone calls are only on holidays. Amen, and that is just what they deserve. That sounds like absolute hell. She sounds like a terrible woman. When we were planning the wedding, my mother-in-law threatened my wife by saying she might not come to the wedding because we weren't doing the Eucharist. 
Over half of the guests weren't Catholic, so it was dumb to have it anyway. That ended well. Want another? In-laws announced they were getting divorced. The weekend before we'd visited them, and everything seemed normal. Went out the weekend after they announced it to try and get answers, at their request, and everything was exactly the same as that prior weekend, and it was really awkward. It wasn't until a day later when we were all sitting in the living room that I spoke up and said, So, can we stop acting like children and talk about this? My wife's mum didn't show up to our wedding. She'd been a part of it the whole time, and out of the blue, on the day of the wedding, she didn't show up. She said, Sometimes you just have to think of yourself, and that she wasn't comfortable because we weren't having a Christian wedding. So we don't talk to her anymore. At my wedding, after the ceremony, my new mother-in-law started yelling at my husband because he made a joke to his father. She then proceeded to storm off, dragging his sisters with her. After about five minutes, her F-buddy of the week stomped over and just started going off on my husband for being disrespectful. I was almost certain my reception was going to turn into a brawl. Three years later, she still hasn't apologised. The in-laws have been going through a rough time financially for a while, and my wife and I have been paying their credit card and parent loan for a couple years. Father-in-law's parents passed this year, and he gets a large, but not massive, inheritance, around 75 k We keep paying the bills because father-in-law is still not working full-time, and he puts the inheritance away, so mother-in-law, who is horribly irresponsible with money, can't access it. We just arrived on Christmas Eve, and there is a Lexus sitting in the garage, paid for in cash, and now father-in-law is talking about how he wants a Cadillac. I'm so fuming that I haven't been able to sleep and don't want to frick up the holiday, so I'm biting my tongue until we leave. But there's no way we're paying their bills anymore. Wow, that is an absolute cheek. Just imagine you're still paying their bills. And they've got a Lexus and they're talking about getting a new car. Wow, that is a new level of low. You think they'd feel bad, right? Cousin-in-laws come to Thanksgiving the day after we buried my grandmother. They ignored her husband of 58 years who's sitting at the table and don't offer any condolences to any family members and complain when we dedicate the toasts to grandma and not their fourth child with a third husband. Also called me ignorant for not knowing who won American Idol this year. The first time my in-laws came to visit our new home, they started rearranging the furniture and artwork on the walls without asking. They just did it. There's a picture of my late grandmother, she died when my dad was a kid, that everyone in the family wanted, but eventually it was given to my father. My uncle and his wife were over once, and they took the photo off the wall and took it with them when my parents weren't looking. We got it back, but I was told it was really awkward. You're joking. They took a picture off of the wall and left with it. Like, come on, if you were the only ones in the house at the time... Of course, they'd know it was going to be you. And why steal it anyway? Jeez. My mother-in-law is a borderline. She was very abusive when my wife was a kid, both physically and emotionally. I'm talking about stuff like kicking her 10-year-old daughter out of the house in the snow and calling her a mutt because she changed her shirt in front of her dad. Or trying to cut her lips off with scissors for talking back to her. Crazy stuff. But in spite of all that crazy... My wife loved her mum and wanted her to be an active part of her life. Such is the story with borderline parents. They're both the best parents ever and the worst. So we maintained a relationship with her mum, albeit a volatile one that would consist of months where she visits us every day, followed by a year where she'd cut us out of her life for the stupidest little reason. It sucked, but we learned to manage. Then she got cancer and my wife, the only child, felt obligated to take care of her mum so she moved in with us while she underwent surgery and chemo. That's when everything went to hell. My mother-in-law insisted my wife be her sole caregiver, take her to every appointment, clean up after her, change her colostomy bag, cook every meal from scratch, etc. This is all while my wife was completing a 40-hour week practicum, taking her final semester of courses for her master's degree. And of course, I wasn't permitted to help because I was a man and it was her daughter's job to care for her mother. And so my wife would have to leave classes, work and study sessions to come and make her mum a sandwich. I wish I was exaggerating. On top of this, 
We have three kids. The oldest looks like me, white, blonde. The middle looks like my wife, Asian, adorable. And our third actually looks a lot like my wife's dad, who is living in another country. My mother-in-law would treat our kids accordingly. Our first she ignored, as she did me. Our middle she put through the borderline roller coaster of love and hate. And our youngest she took over completely. Never letting my wife so much as hold the little guy, even though he was only one years old. It began to get to the point where he was calling my mother-in-law Mama. She loved that. Meanwhile, my wife's having to deal with all of the mind games her mum played on her while she was cleaning her, cooking for her, etc. My best friend is a girl. We grew up together and she's literally like a sister to me. My mother-in-law was convinced we were having an affair. That my friend was intentionally using my mother-in-law's cancer as a distraction to have her way with me and that my friend was plotting to murder my wife and kids so she could be with me. It got so bad. If I was ever even in the same room with my friend, my wife would hear about it for days. And even though my wife isn't crazy, her mum was so manipulative, it began to put a cloud of suspicion over our marriage and almost completely ended my relationship with my friend. Now, before you ask why the heck I didn't do anything about all this, I wanted to do something terribly, but I knew that the level of pain and torment it would cause my wife would be too much to bear. So I stayed quiet and supported her behind closed doors. I did whatever I could to ease the burden. And then it hit the fan. I came home to hear my mother-in-law berating my oldest over something stupid. My middle was crying having already gotten her own verbal assault. My wife was trying to get her mum to go into the restroom so they could change her colostomy bag. My mother-in-law hit my wife, slammed her into the door, shut the door on my wife's head and then ran into the room and threw herself on the bed. And then my wife said the three words I'd been waiting for. Please do something. I marched into the bedroom and stood at the foot of her bed. My mother-in-law glared at me, daring me to make a move. Get out, I said. What? Get out of my house. You'd kick a woman with cancer out on the streets. I'm kicking the cancer out of my house. I'll find you a place to stay and I'll get you set up with a nurse, but you're no longer welcome in this house. She was filled with anger. If you kick me out, you will never hear from me again. I will never talk to your children again. I will never talk to my daughter again. Is that what you want? If that's your choice, then yes. There wasn't another word between us. I helped her pack her stuff up. I called and hit her into an apartment provided by the hospital and I made sure she was to be taken care of. Once she was gone, I went to find my wife in our room. I was honestly terrified that she wouldn't forgive me for kicking out her mother. She looked at me, tears in her eyes and said, Thank you. I've waited my whole life for someone to do that for me. And then she began to cry all the tears she'd been storing for all the time she needed someone to rescue her. She cried all night. We haven't spoken to her mum since. Long story short, I kicked cancer mum out and made my wife cry. And it was the best thing I've ever done. Okay, wow. What a story. I'm actually kind of speechless after that. The fact that... I don't even know what to say, but that is eventful for every single person involved. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. I really am. Guys... Please share your experiences with terrible in-laws. Although I can't imagine a story beating that one, to be fair, because that is wow. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos coming daily.